today on the TMZ Podcast. Hello and welcome to the TMZ Podcast. I'm Charlie Cotton and today on the podcast we have a very special episode because we're going to be talking to this guy, Jeremy Corbell, who is part of the TMZ Presents UFO Revolution event on Tubi, which is streaming right now. Uh, it's a three-parter where we'll look at all of the evidence thus far um, for UFOs, how we got here. We'll talk about the UFO hearing in July. Um, and basically, this three-part just exposes a lot of the sort of secrets and why the government may be covering up those secrets. And joining me today is a very special guest. His name is Jeremy Corbell. He is a filmmaker, a ufologist. You're a martial artist. You got a great beard. Is there anything else we need to know? Uh, just most of what you said is fact. My name and the beard part, 100% correct. Thank you. That's good. <laughs> That's good. It's a good start. So you are the star of a new documentary that TMZ is putting out on Tubi. It's free on Tubi. It's out now. Uh, it's a three-part event where we discuss UFOs. It's called TMZ Presents UFO Revolution. And it's basically following you as you show evidence and talk to people and basically discuss how we got here to the point where UFOs and people who believe in UFOs, that they're aliens and people who see unidentified stuff in the sky, it's at an all time high for like people's attention and people want to know the answers. And so you're a man who's also looking for those answers. Correct. Um, so can you talk to me about how you got into the field that you're in right now, how you're uncovering secrets about UFOs? Sure. So first of all, <clears throat> UFOs are, are not a matter of belief. It, it's either true and hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people have been saying what they've seen and are correct. And even if one of them was correct, that these are craft from some intelligent civilization other than human beings as we know them, right? So it's, it's not a matter of belief. It's either true or not true. I would like to know, mm -hmm. not just believe. I would like to know. So that's what kind of started me is this feeling that when I realized we, we've been lied to systematically and, and we've been told this is nonsensical, it's not serious, and serious people can't have this conversation. Who have we been lied to by? Well, your, your guess is almost as good as mine. I know for sure that our government and other world governments have made a orchestrated attempt to downplay the problems, I'll say, that they've been having with the UFO phenomenon, which is like incursions onto military bases, messing with nuclear weapons. All of this is documented in multiple countries over decades, public information. So at least there's been obfuscation. The true architects of this secrecy are obviously whoever are flying and operating these machines that people have been seeing in the sky for over a uh, hundred years, if you want to go back probably further. But why I got interested in it, that mm. was your question. Yes. So I, I think like a lot of people, when I was a young kid, 13 years old, I heard a guy named Bob Lazar on the radio with a man named George Knapp, who's an investigative reporter out of Las Vegas. And it was something Bob Lazar said. He told this fantastical story about reverse engineering alien spacecraft at a military base that we didn't know at the time, but it's called Area 51. That was cool. But one thing he said really just incited me. It, 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 I like to say it weaponized my curiosity, it really did. It made me become an active participant and no longer a passive consumer of this information. What Bob Lazar said is that these craft don't propel with reactionary propulsion. So what that means is like rockets to roller skates, you push something out the back, you go forward. That's how I thought everything worked. He says, in fact, it distorts gravity. It's a gravity amplification and distorts time and space in front of the craft and the craft falls into place. Imagine pushing your fist onto a bed that has a bowling ball and the bowling ball rolls to the divot you've created with your fist. Really simple idea. It, it's not pushing out anything out the back. Totally different method of propulsion. Now, why is this so important? As a young kid, I mean, I was an idiot then. I'm kind of an idiot now, but I do get this, which is that 
Time and distance was the number one thing scientists said in my generation growing up that was stopping any other advanced civilization from visiting planet Earth. It's just too far, light years and light years, hundreds of thousands of light years away. We can't create a craft that moves fast enough. We could never carry the fuel unless it's a solar cell craft. All this stuff. If Bob Lazar was right, then the distance is irrelevant which would then say, right, like the Fermi paradox, this guy, really famous guy back in the day said, you know, where is everybody, <laughs> you know, if it's true? Well, we've all said there's probably intelligent life, hopefully smarter than us, out in this vast universe. Every time you look up, you see a point of light, it's a star. That star has orbiting planets. One of those planets, statistically, has the elements that are needed for life. So obviously, wherever we're sitting on planet Earth, when we look up, there should be a lot of life out there. But are they coming here was the question. If Bob Lazar was right, that these are gravity-propelled craft, then that distance no longer matters. So there I am at 13. I have that thought. Then all of a sudden I realize girls exist. So I forgot about UFOs for a long time. But I always kept my kind of mind in it, right? But that's how I got started, was hearing this guy explain the propulsion. And then, God damn, life got weird after that. Mm. So if these... Aliens are so far away and they can get here, you know, in their new technology so fast. Why then would they just do flybys then and we see UFOs? Wouldn't we have like irrefutable evidence by now? Everyone's got a camera in their pocket. Um, I would have thought that if they're out there or, or they're here, really, we, we might know by now. So amazing, great questions because everybody asks those. People want to know those fundamental questions. But let's, let's start with the first part. You said the word aliens, right? Mm -hmm. I, anything foreign from us that is undiscovered is pretty alien to us. I don't know what that word means. I, I, I might say that there are people from other places that might be coming here, but it might be stranger than that. Maybe what we're seeing is a technology of people that have been here way longer than us and are just not revealing themselves the way we might want to see. Mm. Imagine people walking, when you, when you walk um, in your home country of Australia and you walk by you know, a fire ant. We hill. are aliens, actually. We're a aliens from another country. Okay, okay. So, <laughs> yeah. so look, that, that word means nothing right. to me because it can mean so many things, but you know, anything kind of new and novel and, and unknown is, is alien to us. I get that. But when you walk by like a fire ant hill, you don't sit down, kneel down, talk with the ants, explain to them your problems with your girlfriend, your wife, how you have to pick up your kid. You don't tell them that. No. So same kind of thing. We don't know what these machines represent to us based upon where they're coming from yet. Or I don't know the answer to that. It could be an ultra terrestrial civilization, a civilization that's been here longer than us and has just been doing their own thing, maybe under the oceans. And then all of a sudden they have this advanced technology. There are so many theories of who could be operating this machinery. It is astounding. We, yeah. we go into that a little bit in the series in the third episode. So that's the first part of what you said, right? That word. I'm not sure what it means. Your next question. Well, wouldn't we have just absolute proof? Everybody has a cell phone. Everybody has a camera, mm. right? Well, first thing now is it's not just like Uncle Jim on a farm telling you, ah, I think I saw a UFO. Now we have radar coming in, let's say in the 40s, 50s, right? Well, now we have such high-tech weapons platforms that have capable optical um, ability to capture both in infrared, in thermal, normal you know, footage. So the sensor platforms that our military has is catching more of these. I saw, like I watched the first episode and I saw... You showed the footage of, what do you call it? The jellyfish yeah. UFO? Like, what it's because it, it's so weird looking. It does look like a jellyfish that was in Iraq over a U.S. military base. Can you describe that for me? Yeah, this is the first time the world is getting military filmed footage from an incursion of a military base, which is a big deal no matter what it is. No, yeah, well, even if it's some a spy from an, an enemy country or whatever, it, then that's... Bad news as well. Anything unidentified, we don't know its capability or intent, and if it can carry a payload, is at the highest level of um, concern. So this is the first time the world gets to see military filmed footage, the crystal clear thermal imagery mm. that I provided. Right? A, I mean, it's, it's a great shot. I watched it, and I mean, I don't know what it is. It's like a weird jellyfish is. in the sky. I don't know what it is yeah. either. But the thing is, remember, evidence for one person is not evidence for another. So there's a right. few layers to this. So one is the video, right? But also, I spent years dealing with 
who eyewitnessed this, right? How was it treated when it was taken and, and secured? And they're like, don't talk about this. Everybody sign NDAs. Why, why did that happen? There's a human story behind this. And what the individuals saw this object do is astounding. It, it went out over a body of water. It stopped on a dime. It then descended into the water, stiff, right? 17 minutes is under the water comes back out in a controlled ascent, and then shoots off with instantaneous speed. So if that is true, and you know these witnesses who saw this full version of the footage and also saw it as it was happening, if that is true, then we have a machine that can do things that's called transmedium, which is the ability to go from space to air to sea and, and, and have no inertial effect. So if that's what we're seeing, we don't have that tech. Russia doesn't have that tech. China doesn't have that tech yet. Mm. One day we, we hope to, and that's a whole nother story. Are we reverse engineering these things? Well, when I watched the congressional hearings, where you were a part of those congressional hearings, I see you sat there. And I submitted testimony in written form. Right. So part of those congressional hearings um, was that potentially we do have spacecraft or even more, we might have non-human life um, that the government is is keeping from us. How, yeah. how can that be so? That the government has the the craft, they've got the bodies, and they're not telling any of us. Right. So I, I can tell you that we do. That we have reverse engineering programs. That that we are trying to do. Uh, we're trying to exploit the technology and get derivative technologies. We don't have the material science to replicate these propulsion systems. They do indeed, in the scientific field of the people working on this for our government, they do believe that they are gravitationally propelled. It's not something that we can do at this time with our technology. But I can tell you for sure, we do have, and I have had direct exposure to information on this, mm. durationally, that I have vetted with my mentor in journalism, George Knapp. We both have. I can tell you it is fact that we are trying to, and for a long time, and not just us, but the Russians too and the Chinese, um, major industrial co countries are trying to reverse engineer this technology. The reason why is because we want a technological advantage in each nation. Whoever gets this technology first, they win. That's it. They win. It is a dominant technology. So the weaponization potential of these technologies is rated by our intelligence agencies as higher than weapons of mass destruction. That is true. That is fact. How do they keep a secret? That's what you asked, right? And why do they keep why? a secret? So I got to ask them about why, but I, you know. But I mean, what would they be their motivation? I mean, yeah. would it be because it did upend religion? It did like make us scared? Um, why would they try so hard to keep it under wraps? Well, my wife says it might be 2024 in the world, but it's 1955 in my brain. So I can tell you why they started keeping a secret because my brain is 1955, right? So back in, let's say, the 40s and the 50s, why do they keep it secret? What is there to tell? If we don't have air dominance with 360 degree understanding of what's around us in warfare and combat within our own nation and things are just flying in with impunity, you don't admit that until you get a grasp on what it is. Mm. The secrecy initially was because they didn't believe it posed any national security threat. They never said they don't exist, UFOs. They said, what we're seeing doesn't seem to pose a national security threat. That was a smart way to get out of having to reveal to the American public and the global public. But keeping it secret was like the atomic bomb, man. If you're working on the atomic bomb, now everybody knows nuclear physics exists, but you don't give people the recipe. It was a very secret program when they were building the atomic weaponry and arsenal, right? Same thing with this. This is an unknown. We don't know the implications. Lock it down, lock it down, lock it down. That was their mantra back then. And they were able to do it because they already had the architecture and the blueprint for that type of compartmentalized secrecy through the atomic program. So they did that with UFOs. Now, why did they do that? That's how they did it. Why did they do that? I think it was ultimately good people trying to protect our nation's sovereignty and our ability to defend ourselves. But we are fucking past that. We are past that now. We have reached a point of no return. The majority of the population understands UFO reality is true. It's real. What it actually represents, 
We don't know. And maybe that's what they're, why they're fighting to not disclose it now. Because we don't know that there is extraterrestrials in their craft. They could be, uh, I don't know, you know, from China or from Russia or God knows where. Those have been eliminated. Those have been I eliminated? I can tell you that for sure. So the other, I have documents from Russia that George Knapp smuggled in back in the, the 90s, early 90s, during Glasnost and Perestroika. Those documents, legitimate documents of UFO programs, they know what we're working on, that we have certain satellites that look solely for the UFO problem. They know what we're working on. They know Roswell was not an American uh, crash. It was not a Russian crash. They know it was an other crash. So other nations are also working on this. And, and it is not what we are seeing, like with the Tic Tac UFO with Commander David Fravor in 2004, a very famous case, the Gimbal UAP or UFO, all of these. They know that they're not ours. The 2019 swarms over the West Coast that I reported on. I, I mean, I saw all those videos. They're they know. Compelling. They're interesting videos. Do you really think Donald Trump could have kept this a secret? Yeah, that's funny, right? I, I've thought about that. You know, it, that's really hard to say. I don't, He's an open book. I don't know the person. He says right? everything for attention. Yeah. He surely, you know, but if also, he had secrets like that, he'd be like... Guys, I'm the, you know. Well, you're, you're assuming that presidents get briefed in on this, and I am sadly have to report to you. Is that, that right? Yeah, there's two sides to the coin of intelligence, right? And, and one side is clearance. And of course, you think the president has the highest clearance possible. The other is need to know. So the way this has been compartmentalized is they take private industry, like, I don't know, Lockheed Martin, Boeing, BA, BAE, or whatever. They take them and they give them some of the tech because they, they, nobody can FOIA, Freedom of Information, ask to these companies. They say, work on this and report back to us. It's, it's stovepiped and compartmentalized by using private industry to shield those programs. And there's a very famous case of an individual who should have had access trying to get it. It's called the Wilson Davis Memo. If you look it up, that's a real conversation that happened. And they hid it from him. And this guy was like the J2, which should have control over all of our black projects. So, so... To the point that there is an infrastructure in place to keep this secret from you, and that should piss you off. And you think so? You think to answer the question, Donald Trump didn't know anything. What or, I'm or, what or I'm you... saying is that different presidents are read into different levels. I do know for a fact that he was briefed on on UAP or UFO, but to the depth of which he was is is a standing question. Have you ever had a? Encounter with an extraterrestrial? <laughs> I married my wife, man. <laughs> She's like a Russian spy cyborg from, you know, 1920s. Um, so I, I was able happily to say no to you for, for decades on that question. Very happily. I'm always the guy with my back turned. Everybody else sees cool shit. I never do. I'm never impressed by anything. And then, and then, <laughs> however, one time there I was uh, walking with a buddy of mine, a guy named Dave Foley. He's a comic from Kids in the Hall back in the day. Okay. He's actually now in that new show, Fargo. Have you seen that? Oh, wow. Yeah, Dude, it's, so he, he wears an eye patch. Oh, that wow. Guy. That's amazing. Yeah, he's amazing, man. So, but he's more credible than me, he's more rational, and people trust him, right? So, mm. thank God I got a witness. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, I did see for the first time in my life over after chasing this topic. You know, for decades, I did see a machine that was in the sky that did things that that looked impossible to me. It's something that I know that we don't have the capability yet. And I got a witness and we saw it and it was a pretty durational viewing and it was um, pretty amazing. So, yeah, they're real. UFOs are real. Just look up. We actually call them. I mean, don't we call them UAPs now? Yeah. Why the change in acronym? Smart. Yeah, it's a smart thing. So UFO, Unidentified Flying Object. That was actually just a, a throwaway term. We, we now know that they go and operate under the water and in outer space. So you've got two more domains, right? So it's, it's an all domain phenomenon. Mm. Okay. So UAP was then unidentified aerial phenomena. That's what the government changed it to. And it was to destigmatize and to better, but now it's even better. Unidentified anomalous phenomenon because it's not just air. It's it, hard to keep up with all these. Yeah, but let's just settle on UFO is fine, okay. but UAP is what you'll read a lot in the press. And it makes sense long term. We'll adapt to it. Human beings are the most adaptable creatures. What do you think would happen to society if there was irrefutable evidence that people not from this world, not people, extraterrestrials 
were here and they knew we existed and I, I thought about this. Here's what would happen. Tell me. Okay. You know in COVID, everybody snatched up all the toilet paper. Yeah. The popcorn industry would go bananas. Right. Everybody would go get all the popcorn on planet Earth. They get their lawn chairs, they sit outside, they start eating popcorn and just looking at the skies, man. We're not gonna panic. That is so nice. So? That is so 1950s, man. You think people wouldn't panic? You know how many people on planet Earth uh, understand that UFOs are real? I mean, if you do, if we look at any of those polls, it's like people understand they're real now. This is a different yeah, but era. That's different than seeing the actual beings. Yeah, maybe I'm, a, I'm an optimist. Well, you yeah. didn't say beings. I mean, nobody's coming up to share that popcorn. I'm a germaphobe. <laughs> you are. You a didn't germaphobe. say that. Now, no, that's different. I saw beings. you sanitize your hand off. You shook yeah, my yeah, head. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> well, it's not just you. You look very nice. <laughs> right, I'm, yeah. I'm slightly. Okay. Clean, don't worry, enough. don't worry. We're good. Just don't breathe in my mouth. Um, there seems to be more and more. <laughs> no danger of that. Uh, <laughs> there, there seem to be more and more people coming forward with stories such as the one you just told. Yeah. Why do you think that, you know, there's an increasing number of people saying me too? We said what? Well, not me too, about as in a celebrity UFOs? sense. UFOs? Yeah, about, about, about people like uh -huh. saying I've seen something too. Or oh, I've yeah, had, yeah. Courage, had an encounter man. too. Courage, you know, it's really sad. A lot of us, we have to get permission from other people to say the truth. And it's a fucked up thing about human consciousness. You know, you get a room of 10 people. Everybody says that's a square and you're not in on the joke and it's a circle. You'll agree with them. That's what happens in psychology. Right. So what's happening now is that people are having courage to, to say, OK, actually, I did see something. You wouldn't believe you really wouldn't believe that the people that have confided in me and called to me to speak with me about this. You wouldn't believe the people that have had direct experiences with UFOs who will never go public about them because they're professional individuals. Well, you might lose your job. I mean, sure. if, if your job is people like really trusting and believing in you and you say something that a lot of people think is, you know. You ain't wrapped so tight. And what if you're doing things where you got to be wrapped tight? What if you're dealing with, you know, things of life and death and you're the guy that sees a UFO? So that's what it used to be like. It's not like that anymore. No, it's not. We're, consensus reality is catching up. Why? Why? Why are they? Um, they're just doing flybys of of Earth. And what do you think that their their motivation would be in, in just looking at? Are they they just doing space tourism and go and look at Earth and then That's my go bet. back home? My well, bet. My bet is that we are the greatest show in the solar system, and they are coming here to see what those crazy humans with bombs are doing, and they're just you know on TMZ and fucking what, you know, what are they doing? You know, right. what are they doing? You know, maybe I, I love that. They like our cupcakes, our top hats and our cocaine. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. You know, but here's the deal. It's not just that it's not just flyovers. And so that's, what's so important to understand. If you really look at the evidence of what people have reported, which is evidence, evidence of what people reported, people are seeing them. That's why UFOs ain't going away because people keep seeing them. It's not just these flybys. These close encounters and these communications are something that are reported more than anything. I'll tell you, I'll speak with pilots all the time. And they start off with saying, okay, I, I saw a UFO. Great, describe it. It's super you know, direct and specific. Give it a couple more months of talking to them and they'll say, oh, there's one thing I didn't tell you. <laughs> what is that? And they hit me with it. There's usually something else that has occurred with that close encounter that has more to do with communication now, can we trust what's being told to these individuals? I don't trust nobody till they earn my trust. So I'm not going to trust what's said. But there is a repeating pattern of things that are said to human beings when they say they've had a close encounter. And oftentimes, it's about um, the devastating things that we're doing to our planet. Oh, the, the aliens, the extraterrestrials have environmental concerns? I don't know if they're extraterrestrials, right? Remember, because I don't know what alien means. I don't know if they're from another planet. I don't know where they're coming from. Could be ultra terrestrial, could be temporal terrestrial, could be extra dimensional, whatever. Okay. These others. Yeah. Okay. Others. Um, historically, if you look at their communications with human beings, some of them have been kind of nonsensical, right? But some of them, like this famous case um, where a school called the Aerial School, about, I think it was 60 to 90 kids, don't remember. They saw these saucers that dropped down into their schoolyard. And I know two of the females who are now adults who are standing right there within a meter from these beings, these what, what you called aliens. Right? Mm. And it was as if there was a movie projected into their mind. They said, quote, they were mesmerized. And it was like a vision that they were having. 
and it showed a destruction of the planet. You got to take care of yourself. This is for the future. Pass this message on. That is something that I've heard over and over in private conversations of people that told me is that there's, but, but I don't trust it, man. You got to earn trust. Whoever these visitors are, they could reveal themselves and they haven't. So mm. the true architects of the secrecy, it's not our government. It's not stigma. It's these guys, whoever they are. Any evidence of probing? I mean, do you have evidence? No, I mean, I, I was just like, it's something you see in cartoons. <laughs> what is evidence? Explain yourself. What is evidence of probing? What, what specifically would be evidence of probing? Someone telling you, like, you know, I was in my hotel room. <laughs> oh, I, I'm making a joke. <laughs> now you're trying to throw it back at me? I don't know. Like, I just wanted you to describe that a little bit. I don't know. No, no, look, look, man. That's, a, that, that's one of the things that is put forward to try to create the laugh factor about the true UAP reality. Uh, that is not something that comes up in any of the conversations I've ever had with witnesses. Now, I'm sure there's one-offs where some alien thought some human was hot and maybe something happened, but <laughs> right, that's right. not what I'm talking about. So no, that, that is another thing that is put on culture to help us laugh about an uncomfortable situation. It is uncomfortable maybe to know that there are craft and they are here and they've been here a while and we don't know who's flying them, what their intent is. That can be scary to some people. I, I have an interest in UFOs. In fact, I went to a UFO convention one time oh. in Arizona. I was, yes. trying to, I was trying to pitch my boss a documentary about conventions and about like different, con I went to a clown convention. I went to a mortician's convention. Ooh, that'd be fun. A lot of them. And the basis, the premise of the thing I was trying to pitch, which never, <laughs> which never flew, no pun intended, was that a lot of people out there are struggling for identity and they find it at these conventions with like-minded folks that, you know, they're from all over the country, all over the world, and in their own society, in their own communities, they feel a bit isolated and embarrassed by whatever their passion is, yeah. their obsession is. And so they come to these conventions one weekend a year, and it's like their Super Bowl. Everyone gets them. Everyone understands them. Um, do you think that, like, identity and, and people wanting to believe and be part of something has any bearing on more and more people joining this community? Uh, you mean in a genuine way, like coming forward with their true experiences it, or making yes. them up? Well, not, not making them up, yeah. it, because I think that sounds almost too sinister. Mm -hmm. I think people want to believe and try to believe, and uh, I, I don't know if what the facts are. Okay, so the, yeah, what the facts are is a completely different thing. We'll talk about that. But of course, look, you were going to make a documentary on whoever your boss is. You got to retalk that. You should Harvey, do that. Oh, Harvey. Hey, I'm not naming names. You can You're naming it. names. You can pitch I, it to him for me. I so keep let's secrets revive this. for a living, man. You just outed it. But anyway, check <laughs> right. it out. Um, I, I think that is part of the human condition. And I, I, I think that it's important that we address that. Yeah, of course, we are all looking to uh, understand the world we live in in a deeper way. And that comes from a personal perspective. So to be able to get with people with similar interests, I mean, come on, that's part of the human condition. I, I will say though, I learned a long time ago that my identity is not tied into my interests. It's not tied into the feelings that I have about you know, the, just my interests or even what I do in life. You know, who you are and what you do is, is independent of these things you choose to apply yourself to. And I think that's important for people to know. It's like going into a community is not going to give you that fullness you're looking for. It just lets you bounce things off of the other people. You got to get whole on your own. Just a little personal um, yes. FYI there. But yeah. But I think the same thing about like Taylor Swift fans. Uh -huh. You know, these people who they really want to view themselves in a certain way or have society perceive them in a certain way as sure. Swifties are. And I think people who maybe looking for an identity, latch on to something where there's an inclusive community of people who love you and support you. That is you fucking and, great. Yeah. I, I think that is great. And I think I, it's great for yeah, people. Yeah. I, I think it's important that people find a community in a world that is continuously self-isolating. And I, I think that, that whatever it takes to do that, that people should get with like-minded people with like-minded interests. When you're dealing with something with UFOs, um, you have to be careful of, just as in any field, that you don't you know, self-edit to the point where you're not seeing the rest of the world. So I think it's important right. to find these communities, find the community of people that, you, uh, uh, that uplift you, you want to spend time with, but be open to the fact that it's a wide, wide world out there. You're a black belt in jiu-jitsu? Yes. Could you beat an alien in a fight? Doubtful. 
Okay. I have major, major injuries. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, I could barely run from my <laughs> Right, injury, right. But that's okay. Last question. What happens to us when we die? It is the ultimate question. Yeah. That's your answer? Yeah, it's the <laughs> ultimate question. Because yeah. it seems to be the two questions. What's out there? Is there anything else out there? And what happens to us when we die? Are They're we the two alone? Qu- and, and is there life after death? Right. What happens to us after we die? Yeah. Yeah, I'm fascinated by those two questions. And some people, you know, uh, might say that by learning where we are in the universe, like where we're sitting and what we're part of, which might be a larger ecosystem than we ever imagined, that those other types of questions uh, might be able to be answered too. True. Very true. Well, thank you thank for you. joining me. All right, my brother. And don't forget to check out TMZ Presents UFO Revolution. It's a three-part event on Tubi for free. Uh, you can get that at Tubi.com or download the Tubi app on your TV or phone. And you can be watching UFO Revolution within seconds. It has been nothing to see here. Move on. All of that has changed. Here was a phenomenon that the government couldn't protect us from. What's really going on with the UFO situation? What was the most impressive thing to you about this video, which the world has not seen yet? It has everyone asking questions. More and more witnesses are coming forward. There are many who believe that the government is hiding the truth of this. Are we alone in the universe? No. They're coming here.